Good day viewers, Walter here. Sitting here tonight and wrote you a little story. I wrote it down uh, rather than try to remember everything because I'll leave half of it out sitting here trying to tell it from memory. But I just wrote the story and I haven't edited it or anything. So I'm just going to read it to you as uh, unedited. So I'm sure I'll mess up with some of my reading here as my eyes ain't that great today. But the title of today's vlog or story, today's vlog includes a short story. I don't know how short it is, it's about three or four pages long. But the title is, I Remember the Great Space Race. The setting for today's story is Brevard County, Florida. In 1958, when I turned 10 years old, I had only moved there the year before in 1957. Not much is to remember from that time other than memories of playing and roaming the neighborhoods of O'Galley, Florida. I do recall the fun we had fishing from the causeways along the Indian River and um, piers and places such we had all kind of little fishing holes we would go to. And in fact, that was our biggest hobby, was fishing when we weren't in school. Um, I remember how scared folks got when the Soviet Union launched the Sputnik satellite into orbit around the Earth, which beat out the United States by a good two years just to get a satellite into space. And I think they needed a satellite so they could spy on each other. At least I think that was Eisenhower's part of the race, was trying to spy on Russia. Anyway, the Sputnik satellite went into orbit around the Earth. The evening news with a man named Douglas Edwards, CBS News, broadcast the radio signals, which was simply a radio transmitter from the satellite, which went beep, 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 beep. Alarming the whole world, we all went outside to see the glow of the Sputnik as it passed over our neighborhood in the night sky. It made everyone realize just how easy it would be to send a missile over here and blow us all to kingdom come. that moment on, the space race was on to prepare for war. Folks all over who could afford one build a bomb shelters to hide in when Armageddon arrived. The meaning of Armageddon in the Bible is the last battle between good and evil before Judgment Day. I guess those folks with the bomb shelter didn't realize there will be no hiding or escape when Judgment Day does arrive. In school, we were trained to hide under our desks and cover our heads when the bombs exploded. I later in life learned while attending nuclear biological chemical warfare school in the Navy just how futile that would be. The race was on, however, and sometime around, sometime around 1960, I joined a local drum and bugle corps in town and learned to play the bugle where we marched in parades all around Florida. Some of our musical repertoire was songs such as You're in the Army Now, Mademoiselle from Armateur, The Long Long Trail, a slew of other musical pieces that make me cringe nowadays. What the Drum and Bugle Corps had to do with the space race, I shall relate to you momentarily. We lived only about 15 miles from Cape Canaveral, Florida, where missiles often launched. We often got to go outside and watch the big rockets launch through the skies. On some occasions it'd be daytime or at nighttime, but we got to see them explode sometimes in the sky when they failed to perform as designed. We all got to watch when astronauts such as 
Alan Shepard and John Glenn climbed into a space atop a huge flaming propelled rocket. We were all in awe of such heroic daredevils. I recall thinking to myself, you never catch my ass on top of one of them rockets. Sometime around 1962, the U.S. government created an organization called NASA and a big parade was scheduled. Actually, it was more of a motorcade showing off the original five Mercury astronauts. The, the parade proceeded along Highway A1A along the east coast of Florida. We were standing by the highway the Drummond Bugle Corps, that is, and we played our music as the motorcade passed by waving to us. The last car in the parade, our motorcade, had the Vice President of the United States, Lyndon Johnson, sitting atop of his convertible, waving at us. Someone decided we needed to be in that parade, so we jumped into the highway and marched along behind him, playing our music. Play, play our music as loud as we could. Needless to say, we were not in the parade very long before a herd of police and Secret Service people openly objected to our participation in their little parade. Needless to say, we have come far since those days. Even to this day, I sometimes catch myself humming or whistling one of the tunes that we used to play, thinking back favorably upon those days when the space race was in its infancy. I conclude today's story as it is getting a little bit long, and I thank you for listening. Steve Walpar wishing everybody well. I hope you got a little kick out of my story. Y'all take care.